While I was scanning Starbucks, my scanner returned a chance for client-side desynchronization attack. So what is desynchronization attack or HTTP request smuggling? So in this video, we will look at what is HTTP request smuggling or desynchronization attack, how can we detect it, how can we confirm it, how can we exploit it. We will also add live examples and also how we can force desynchronization. This is my channel. I do videos on bug bounty and reverse engineering. Check out my other videos. And Malayalathil bug bounty content vayangil, subscribe to this channel. I will be uploading soon. Before learning HTTP request smuggling, you should be familiar with few terms. First of all, content length. Content length is the size of the content in bytes. Here it is zero. Type in any value and send a request. Here I will add three and send the request. You can see the content length one. Now I will type an enter. Now again send the request and you will see the content length three because everything ends with a slash r and slash n. Now let's see what is transfer encoding. Transfer encoding is used when the content length is unknown. It is mainly used for dynamic content and streaming. I will explain request smuggling as simple as possible. This is the basic idea behind HTTP request smuggling. This is how a normal request from two different users look like. In this case, two different users send two different requests and get two different response. But in the case of smuggling request, we will add an additional request in our content, which is the orange block. When we send the request, the backend server treats the orange block as a new request. And when another user sends a request to the same server, the orange block, which is the payload or the get request we passed with our content, gets added on top of their request and the user gets the response accordingly. Other than the get request, think of the orange block as an XSS payload we have given. It will be added on top of the request of a legitimate user and the user gets the response. And our payload will be executed on the user's legitimate user's browser. So we can steal passwords, cookies, etc. from the user. This vulnerability can earn us a good amount of bounty. So here I will explain how we can bypass access control using request smuggling. This is how a normal request looks like. We send a single request and get a single response. So as a normal user, we have certain access control limits. Like we cannot access the admin panel of a page, we cannot add or delete users. But in the case of request smuggling, we can smuggle an another request. Like this. The single request we sent has two different requests to post request to the root and get request to the slash admin page and it will give a response of the admin page. This is how the request will look like. And this works normally in HTTP version 1. It will also work in 2 but under certain conditions based on the backend architecture. So this is how it will look like. The frontend server looks at the content length and sees this as a single request. But the backend server looks at the transfer encoding chunk and sees this as two different requests. The get request and the post request. And it will fetch for the admin page and give us the response of the admin page. That is how HTTP request smuggling can be used to bypass access control. It can also be used to achieve SSRF, XSS and many more.
let's see how we can detect the http request smuggling attack for the desynchronization attack for that we are going to use this lab of port sugar exploiting http request smuggling to deliver reflected accesses open the lab connect it to your bird then open the bird and intercept the traffic wait a moment okay and reload the page you get a get request forward it to the repeater then in the repeater just send the request and check if it's working now we need to do quite a few things first change the http to version 1 then change the method from get to post change request method and now select the settings and turn off automatic update of content length then add 6 and this payload 3 abc cube Now we need to add the transfer encoding. Now send the request. See, you can see a time delay in the response. It may take a moment. See, the communication timed out. This is a strong indication that there is a CLTE vulnerability. So, what is CLTE vulnerability? which means that the front end checks for content length and the back end checks for transfer encoding chunk so it sees the second request as another request this is how we confirm the vulnerability using timing attack the method on the right is for testing tcl vulnerability which means the front end checks for transfer encoding and the back end checks for content length so always try the first method then go for the TECL because otherwise it may cause socket poisoning. Now we have detected the vulnerability but how can we confirm it? For confirming the CLTE vulnerability we will be using this lab. Confirming vulnerability via differential response. What is differential response? Which means we will be sending two requests one with content type of a get request to a page that doesn't exist and this request will be added on top of the next request we will be sending as this is an invalid request we will get a 404 let's see let's test it out we will capture the request and send it to repeater then do the same thing as we did earlier change the request to post and to version 1 then add transfer encoding chunk but do not change the automatic update then add our payload which means our get request to the non-existing page send the request and we will get a 200 now send the request one more time to get it like this the get request will be on top of the next request so it will be treated as an invalid request. This confirms that there is a CLTE vulnerability. For confirming this vulnerability, you must be quick in sending the response. Because this lab is only accessed by me and I have enough time to send the next request. But in a normal case, when we are testing in a bug bounty target, many users will be using the target website. So when there is a lag between two requests some other users will get the error to avoid that there is an extension to speed up the process in the burp extension section search for http request smuggler then right click on your request then extensions to http request smuggler then smuggle attack clt you can modify the code in the way you want then attack 
hot the process and you can see the 200 and 400 response as we go to earlier so let's see a live demonstration of the bug using html smuggling we can trigger xss on an another user for demonstrating i am using this port sugar lab we should capture two requests a get request to the root page and a get request to any of the post now make changes to the get request change it to post and http2 version 1 then add transfer encoding we will be using the user agent section to add the payload because if i type in zodiac and send a request it is reflected on the page so if i break out of the script and add a script tag i can make an alert pop up this is the changes we should make always add a zero there as a terminating chunk so the backend server thinks our request ends there and add a get request to the post with payload in the user agent now send the request this will be the request from the attacker perspective as our request is sent go to the page and reload this is the second request made from a legitimate user when the user tries to reload the page he will get a prompt asking to enter his credentials so this is how http request smuggling can be used to trigger an reflected xss sometimes we have to force desynchronization in most cases the transfer encoding chunk works but nowadays many systems detect this so we need to make slight changes to make it harder to spot add a space before transfer encoding add a space after that add an x before it type the chunk in the next line and many more methods try it and found what works on your target if you like my content subscribe and follow